everyone, it's Gabriella with Feeding Type 1, aka Ella, and this video is going to be the wrapping up of my traveling series. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, on April 5th, 2017, uh, for the first time since I got sick, I flew on a plane all by myself, all the way across the country, coast to coast, all the way to California. Uh, the first flight was very, or the first, uh, the trip out was very streamlined for the most part. Um, the TSA was great. I was able to get, um, great service. We didn't have any issues. It was super easy, really streamlined. The whole process was like less than 10 minutes. So, anyway, so they boarded me onto my first flight. And my first flight, and then I had to land somewhere get a connection, which is like the long that goes all the way to Cali, it's like four or five hours. So getting, um, once we hit touchdown, uh, my layover was in Detroit. Um, we had 38 minutes to get me from that, from that flight, that from my hometown to the connection to California. So, Anyway, I got on that flight because <laughs> there's actually this really, really, really cool um, law that I was not aware of. If one person from one flight is on the same and they are an able-bodied person, if they make it to the connecting flight, then they actually, under the American Disability Act Section 504, under, you know, yeah, that one. <laughs> Uh, they actually have to wait for a passenger if you're in a wheelchair. Now, uh, I do use a wheelchair for distance. I am not able to walk extremely far distances. And airports are very big places, and so are malls. And basically, if I'm going to go, if I'm running into the store, sometimes I'll just, you know, just run in and take a wheelchair. But a lot of times I do um, use my wheelchair during periods of time where uh, my counts are low, like if I need an iron infusion or, you know, blood transfusion or, you know, RER or whatever. Uh, or if my pre-albumin is really low and I'm really weak and tired. Uh, it's a couple of things. But those kind of all play into factor of how often I need my wheelchair or not. But anyway, obviously for going all the way across the country, I was going to need it. So my wheelchair went with me. Uh, when we touched down on that first flight, they, we had to go really, really fast, and we did make my connection, and when I got on my second plane and the connection, which was going to take me from Detroit to California, the flight attendants were v less than wonderful, less than professional, and, like, were throwing a fit about my IV fluids, and they're like, well, how'd you get through security? I, I said, the same screening process that all passengers are required by federal law. So anyway, that was a mess. <sighs> Super rude. Luckily, there happened to be an amazing woman next to me who happened to be in the Air Force, and uh, she was just going to have none of that. So she held me out, and she put the flight attendant in her place, and that was good. Now, uh, California, as far as my comments for that, well, I learned a lot. I did return home here on Easter Sunday. I did come home early. Uh, I did that just because, again, we're just going to shorten it with I learned a lot. Um, I spent four and a half hours like, all together in collaboration on the phone between TSA Cares and Delta Cares, literally working off 12 hours before I left off. So, <laughs> I spent all day prepping, and then I got on the plane and took the red eye. Um, and then at San Francisco Airport, I had a couple of issues with the TSA. Um... They, you know, I, I, they're like, well, why do you have all these fluids? I go, I call TSA Cares. Here is the first name of the TSA Care member I was, you know, set up with. And here's the reference number. So they're being really, really rude. This woman said to the guy, I was being really rude to back off. 
and take some steps back that, you know, you know, she was the female and the female there for a reason. And she told him to go ahead and back off. So he did, and they get, you know, they just love being so overdramatic. So then they get all, you know, there's six guys over there. And then the chief, so like the top person of the TSA in the airport walks up and goes, you're dismissed, you're dismissed, you're dismissed, you're dismissed, you're dismissed. Ma'am, I apologize. And then he said to me, ma'am, I apologize for, you know, the inconvenience. Let's get you done. Let's get you on your way here. And, well, some people got a new, ripped a new one. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, so, now here's the highlight of the story. On my way back, I had, by far, the most absolutely incredible flight attendants in my life. They were so kind, they were so helpful, they were so respectful. Right before we were boarding, like when I was boarding and they were getting me all set up on the plane and stuff, she said, okay, if I, if you need assistance, what do I need to know to be able to help you? And my jaw dropped. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. And she goes, I see you have a Dexcom on your arm. And I was just like, yeah. She goes, well, my, you know... I got some family members who have kind of something similar for epilepsy. They have, like, this monitor that can, that hooks to their phone that can, like, tell them if they're going to, like, have a seizure or something. And so she totally understood the um, Dexcom, like, and how it went to my phone and stuff. That was so cool. Uh, I did have a rough time flying home. Um, my OG stats did actually tank a couple times. Um, because the vomiting was very aggressive. It was very, very hard. Uh, but I did get started on four liters, and then we were able to stabilize, and then I was able to come off from air. I was good, and then we got on my second flight, which brought me from Atlanta to my hometown. And on that flight, I did throw up a lot, and then I did require O2 for probably about 35 minutes during that flight. But then once my stats improved and I, you know, I just took off to do room air just to see. And then I was good. My stats were good. Holding it at like 99, which is perfect. So, because uh, when they drop below like 96 and they get like 95, 94, I get really, really symptomatic. I get hypoxic and it just does not feel good. Um, and that's just because like those aren't super low stats, but I'm so hypersensitive that it really does affect me. So, here's the best part. There happened to be a PA sitting next to me. How cool is that? And there was a nurse on board too. And we were talking the whole trip back. We were talking the whole flight. I was like cracking like medical tricks. I was like, how do you know this stuff? I was like, and I told them my story. They, I showed them my speech video. And it was really, really cool. And overall, even though I wasn't feeling well, those flight attendants went over and above. And I have to express the most highest level of gratitude to the most absolutely incredible flight attendants I ever had the honor of flying with. So I actually flew with Delta Airlines and they were just weird. <laughs> they were absolutely amazing. I was very pleased. They were very good and uh, I look forward to possibly traveling with them in the future. Thanks guys.